Hello everyone and welcome to my newest video on how to apply snow loads in Stia Engineer. In today's video I will cover two load cases that can happen due to snow loads and starting with the first load case, uh, this is the one that considers uniformly distributed snow throughout the whole surface of the roof. In today's example we will work with a monopitched roof that has a slope of approximately 4 degrees and the purlins are positioned on a distance of 2.375 meters. For this load case we have calculated a value of 0.8 kN per square meter and the shape of the load case will be a rectangular surface load. Moving on to the next load case, um, this one considers snow sliding from a taller building that is located next to our roof. As well as small amount in these values comes from wind blowing towards the facade of the taller building and drifting the snow on our roof. For this load case we will work with a trapezoidal shape of a surface load where the maximal value will be 2 kN per square meter while the minimal value will be 1 kN per square meter. With this being said, let's move on to our STIA model and uh, load the structure. For easier navigation, I'm going to isolate just uh, the roof area and I will zoom in the extents. So the first step towards applying these uh, types of loads will be to draw the load panel and load panels are entities uh, that are used into the software uh, to redistribute uh, the surface loads uh, on the purlins. Uh, we can find them in the menu named load panels and uh, there are three types to choose from. Uh, if by any chance you're not seeing this menu load panels then you're probably not working with all tags and I would recommend uh, always to have all workstations, all categories and all tags on. So let's choose a panel with load to 1D and edges and the window for the panel will open and now we have to set the characteristics for the panel. Now the first most important characteristic for a panel to edges and beam is the load transfer direction. Um, I will leave it as it is right now and if this is incorrect we are going to change it later but this is a drop down menu and you can choose between x epsilon or all directions uh, next the load transfer method i will leave it uh, on tributary area and all the other uh, features i will uh, leave them like they are by default so okay now all there is left is uh, to draw the panel so let's choose the points, then escape, and another escape to deselect. If we zoom in on the panel, you can see that there is an arrow, and this arrow represents the direction of the load distribution. Considering that uh, these are the purlins, uh, we can conclude that the direction of the redistribution is wrong, and now we have to change it escape to deselect the purlins. Uh, we will click on the arrow and by clicking on the arrow you are also selecting the panel and under load transfer direction I will choose epsilon. Let's zoom out a bit and you can see that now uh, the tributary area appeared. You can see it clearly uh, how now uh, the redistribution will be. If by any chance you're not seeing the arrow or you don't see the tributary area in your model Let's deselect this, uh, then you can do that by clicking, right click on the background, view settings for all entities, and under structure uh, and panel, there is a load distribution symbol which you can check or decheck um, and uncheck, and tributary area, display, check or uncheck, depending if you want to see them or not. So I will close this, and now uh, we will move on to uh, creating load cases. Let's choose the menu load and we will start first with the load groups. It's very important to create a load group for these uh, two load cases because we are working with two load cases. So I will create a new load group and I will name it S, short for snow. 
The relation between all load cases in this load group will be exclusive, uh, meaning that when the software is uh, creating automatic uh, combinations, uh, it will not combine more than one load case from this load group in one combination. The load is variable, which is correct, and the load type I will set it to snow. Uh, this is also important if you're working with the automatic combinations uh, because uh, this is how the software will know which coefficients to apply. So I will close this uh, and now we have to create the load cases. So let's go to the menu of load cases and I will create a new load case. I will name it S1. Under description, I will write snow. The action type is variable, which is correct. And the load group I will set to S snow. Uh, all the other features, please leave them by uh, default. And there is one thing that I must mention. Under specification, in this drop-down menu, you can find snow, but please do not change uh, to snow because this is something that is uh, connected to the climatic loads. In today's example, we are not working with the climatic loads. So leave it under standard and I will create another load case. This one will be S2. Uh, all the other uh, parameters are set as they were in the previous load case. So I will take this uh, correct as correct and I can close this menu. Now all that is left is uh, to apply the loads in each load case. So let's move first on the first uh, load case and this is going to be S1. Uh, like I said, for this load case we are going to be loading a uniformly distributed uh, surface load. So I scroll down to the menu surface loads and from this menu I will choose surface load on 2D. Now the direction Z is correct, the type uh, you should leave it on force. Also in this drop down menu you will find snow but if you choose snow then the software will ask for coefficient instead of value and the coefficient is something uh, again uh, in connection with the climatic loads, but we are not working with them as well. Uh, so for the value, I will write minus 0 0.8. The global coordinate system is correct and the location will be projection. Now all is set. I will accept OK. And since we only have one load panel, then the software will automatically apply it on the load panel. So this is the surface load. Now we have to check how the software generated this load. There are a couple of ways how to do that, but I prefer this one. So I will write generate mesh. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you can see the generated uh, loads on each purlin. You can see that for the ending ones, we have a value of minus 0.95. Uh, while for the ones in between, we have a value of minus 1.9 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, if you don't want to see the generated loads, but you want to see the original loads, then you can do that by right-clicking on the background, view settings for all entities, and under loads, uh, there is an option generators where you can switch between original, generated, or you can see them both. Uh, just because this is an example, I will leave it to generate it. So, okay, and it will be easier for me to navigate for this video. So let's leave it to generate it now, and I will go back to my PowerPoint presentation just to see, uh, to check if everything is in accordance with the manual calculation. So for the, from the manual calculation, we can see that we expected that the ending purlins will um, take 0.95 kilonewtons per meter, while the ones in between will take 1.9 kilonewtons per meter. And you can see that uh, the software uh, distributed uh, the loads correctly. Moving on to the next load case, uh, this uh, redistribution is a bit more complex because we are working with a trapezoidal uh, surface load. And although the purlins are distance on uh, same space, um, each purlin will take a different value. 
Okay, so let's go back to our model and try to apply this load case and later we will uh, compare with the manual calculation. Moving on to the next load case, I will select S2 snow and now um, I will move again to the surface load. Uh, but surface load on 2D doesn't have an option uh, to work with a trapezoidal uh, type of load, so we will have to use the free surface loads. In STIA there are three types of free loads that you can apply. One of them is the free surface load, which we are going to use. Also, uh, additionally, there is free line load and free point load. Uh, I must say now that uh, these types of loads are very dangerous, uh, if you are not uh, very um, familiar with them. So I would recommend a video that you can uh, watch. I will link it down below in the description. Uh, so you can acknowledge yourself about these loads and be more confident when you use them in your project. I will, I will not focus much on how they work, but I will show you uh, the step-by-step -step procedure of how to load uh, the snow trapezoidal load in this example. So the first uh, requirement by the free surface load is to have a load panel and we do have a load panel so we are going to use this one. The next requirement is uh, to move the coordinate system uh, into the plane where we are going to apply the free surface load. Right now our coordinate system is located down there so in order to move it uh, the easiest way will be I will do it with the local coordinate system LCS and then I will select uh, the panel. So now we moved our uh, coordinate system into the plane of the panel. Now that we are finished we can uh, start applying the free surface loads. So let's go to the free surface load and uh, right now we will have to set the parameters for it. The direction will be Z, which is correct. And then the type of load, again, please leave it to force and do not change it to snow. Uh, under distribution, we can choose between uniform, uh, direction X, direction Epsilon and three points. Uh, all three, direction X, Epsilon and three points, work for trapezoidal uh, type of loads. But for me, the easiest one is three points, so I will choose this one. For Q1, I will apply a value of minus 2, then for Q2, again minus 2, and I will leave it minus 1 for Q3. Be extra careful with the validity, so uh, if it's not set by default, please uh, set it to Z equals 0. The system will be global coordinate system and the location will be projection. Okay. Uh, so now all there is left is uh, to pick the points and let's do that. So this is minus 2, then minus 2, then minus 1, rest, and I'm going to close it. Escape, and another escape, and now uh, we successfully um, drew the load. So let's start, let's try to generate the mesh just to see the results. I will click on generate mesh and you can see that there is a message that says that the tributary area load transfer method is not supported for this type of load. Uh, there is a suggestion by the software, maybe in some CS uh, this uh, load uh, will become grayish. Uh, this means that uh, when you run the calculation, uh, the software will not consider this load case, although it's here. Uh, the software will skip it and uh, this is going to be like non-existent load case. To fix this, uh, we are going to listen to the recommendation by STIA and we are going to change the uh, transfer method. To do that, we are going to click on the arrow of the panel and under load transfer method, instead of tributary area, we have to choose between the other three load transfer methods. For this example, uh, the one that we will that will work best will be accurate fan fixed with fixed link with beams. So let, let's choose this one and let's generate again the loads. 
Okay, so now the loads are generated and let's zoom in a bit just to see what we get as a result. We were expecting to get somewhat a uniform line load, but instead you can see oh, we are having something that it's not that uniform. And this is because uh, the load panels, although they don't have a strength and they don't have a, a weight, they do have a mesh and uh, we use that mesh uh, to do the distribution. So to fix this, we will have to make the, the mesh more dense. And in order to do that, we will go to Tools, Calculation and Mesh and go to Mesh Settings. Under Advanced Mesh Setting, uh, there is an average size of panel element in millimeters. Yeah, be careful with this because I'm working in millimeters. Your, your SIA might be set to meters. So instead of uh, 1000, I will switch to 500 and I think this one will work better. Okay. So let's regenerate the loads again. And now you can see that we have a more equal uh, redistribution. So for this load, we have a value of minus 4.35. And if I go back to my PowerPoint presentation uh, and check the manual calculation, you can see that for the most loaded Perlin, we have a value of uh, 4.35, which is okay. So we can take uh, this load case as OK. Let's zoom out. I will close now the loads and run the calculation. Maybe I will toggle the, the visibility for, all for the whole structure. And I will run the calculation just to see the results. The calculation is finished. And I will move to results and I will open the 3D deformations. The type of load that we are going to use will be combination. The combinations I will set to serviceability limit state. Uh, and uh, the type of selection will be... Let's move it to filter, cross section, and then I will use the cross section of our purlin. Um, um, before I show you the results, let's go back to the loads just to show you the combinations, just to check if everything is according to uh, what we are expecting. I'm working with the automatic combinations. So mm, uh, these are uh, according to Eurocode, the ultimate limit state combination and the serviceability limit state combination. You can see that both of my load cases are um, included into the content of combinations for both of uh, the combinations. And uh, this is usually um, by default of the software. I will close this. If by any chance you're uh, not seeing uh, the automatic combinations or you don't work, want to work with them, you can um, enable or disable them under actions and code combination automatic. But like I said, in today's example, I will work with them. So let's go back to the results and I'm going to refresh the results just to see the results for each Perlin. So now we have a deformation of approximately 75.2 millimeters. I'm not sure if you can see uh, the results, but we were expecting to be somewhere below uh, 30 millimeters, meaning that we will have to change the section of the purlin. Also, you can, uh, if you are interested from which combination uh, this deformation is coming, you can do that by opening the report preview and under report preview, you will get uh, table results for this. And you can see that the maximal deformation is 75.2 millimeters. And this comes from a combination from the permanent plus 70% of the life loads plus uh, snow from load case two. As you can see, uh, we only have one of the snows included into um, this combination. If by any chance you're seeing both of them included in one combination, that, that means that you will have to go back to the uh, load group and uh, change the relation to exclusive. Close this. And this is all that I have prepared for today's video. Uh, thank you for watching it and see you in my next video. Bye.